Hello, this is John from caveoffprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on escape sequences in Perl regular expressions. Now I'm conscious in these videos that I'm bombarding you with a huge amount of regular expression stuff and I think what I'm going to do is we're going to cover a bit more regular expression stuff in the next, in this and the next few videos. And then I'm going to give you a video that's just going to be testing your knowledge of regular expressions to help you get your teeth into them and at least uh, gain a basic initial familiarity with them. And then we're going to get back to looking at some different examples of useful Perl scripts that you can use in real life, uh, assuming that you need Perl, which I assume you do because you're watching this video. Okay, so um, in the last tutorial we looked at uh, the star quantifier and dot star and dot star question mark are uh, possibly the two most useful patterns that you can use in Perl for matching respectively zero or more of any character as much as possible and zero or more of any character but as little as possible for it compatible with the rest of the expression. Now this dot here is is as we've seen it's, it's a wild card that can match any character but very often in your regular expressions you don't want to match just any character you want to match some restricted class of characters and there are various things that you can do in that case uh, you can type the character literally out yourself you could use something called a character class which I'm sure we'll get onto but one of the simplest things you can do is to use an escape sequence so I think for this tutorial I'm actually going to get rid of this uh, is that a good idea? I probably will get rid of this um, stuff that's reading a file line by line because I think it's going to be easier to show you this on a smaller example and I'm going to type here a string let's try my dollar text equals and I'll put some kind of a string in here and I'll use single quotes just to make sure that whatever I type in here will not be interpreted in any way it will just be literal text so supposing for example we want to match well you know what I'll make a list of things here that I think we should take a look at now I'll go through them and I'll show you a few examples so slash D will match any single digit so this is um, a number basically a digit and all the escape sequences that I'm about to show you match single characters and to make them match more than one you have to use a quantifier as we, we've already seen a little bit so D matches digit slash D that is and by the way if, if you decide to use regular expressions in Java you'll have to use slash slash D you'll have to escape the slash but in Perl it's just a single slash slash D uh, you can match a space with lowercase s um, backslash lowercase s so this matches a space if you want to match any non-space character it's backslash capital S so that's a single non-space character if you want to match any alphanumeric character that's an, a letter, a digit or also the underscore counts as alphanumeric then which will be useful for example in for matching a, an email address let's say then you could use backslash w so this is alpha numeric including the underscore and if you I think that's possibly enough now so we, we, we've looked at digits alpha numeric space non-space I think those are the most important ones that you'll need as far as I can think yeah let's leave it at that for the moment okay so let's now let's see some some examples of these so I'll, I'll type some text here and let's say something like I am 117 years old tomorrow so here we've got some text which has numbers in it and let's say that we want to extract just the numeric part of this string 
we can use a regular expression with, as we've seen, a group. So I'm going to say if dollar text and I, I read this as equals equal whoops equals matches slash slash so when I'm typing to myself I find myself reading this as equals matches slash slash but it's actually an equal sign a tilde and two forward slashes and so this is the thing that we want to match and this is the regular expression and now let's put in here backslash D that matches any single number and let's put well now I could use a asterisk but if I use an asterisk then this expression will always match it will always match um, anything because an asterisk means zero or more of the preceding character so I'll show you that as an example let's put um, backslash D star in it and now I'm going to put the brackets on the if and let's surround the bit that we've actually matched by round brackets so that now I can refer to the bit in round brackets as we've seen previously with $1 so I can say here $1 and let's put in backslash n just to make just to make it appear on a new line and to make it even clearer I'm going to type here matched colon and I'm going to put the matched bit in single quotes so this is just a string here with embedded in the string the stuff that we actually matched the dollar one from these brackets and a new line character and I need to put the, the semicolon there let's run this and see what happens so it it says it matches but there's nothing there's nothing actually in dollar one it's empty and that's because star matches zero or more of the preceding character so it's it's successfully matched nothing there's there's no reason why star should match more it's um, it's going to match at the first point that it can in this string and I suppose the first point that it can match is right here at the start of the string where it says yeah I can match zero or more numbers here because there's zero of them and it never even gets on to this bit of the string so to force it to match at least one digit I'm going to use the plus quantifier and we've already met, met the plus quantifier and that means match one or more of the preceding digit so if we can't match one digit here uh, zero or more, one or more of the preceding um, character I should say and slash D means a digit so this is one or more digits and this is greedy by default which means it will match as many as possible so let's run this and now we've got the full 117 because it's matching it's looking for a digit and this is saying one or more digits as many as possible and it finds the 117 what about if we want to match uh, the text am followed by a space followed by 117 we could do something like we could type am literally followed by a space and we could put the space in like that or we can make it even more explicit like if I run this I expect this to work so it matches am117 but uh, to match a space you can also put backslash s like this and one advantage of this is that supposing we want to match any space see this can match any space and if we didn't have that there, if we just had a space there, what if we had a tab here in the original string? So I've just put a tab character in there. I hit the tab key. Let's run this. It doesn't match anymore. Why? Because we're looking for literally a space character. And here there's actually a tab. Whereas if I put backslash n in there, backslash, sorry, backslash s in there, like that, then it's going to match because backslash s will match any single space character but if we have two spaces in there I don't think it will match that let's run that because um, slash s only matches a single space character whether that's a tab or a literal space or if there's some other kind of space character that I'm not aware of um, it would presumably match that as well 
And you, you would, if you want to match more than one space, you would have to use a quantifier, like, for example, star zero or more, or plus one or more, like that, so that matches. Let's just put this back how it was. And in fact, what I'll do is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that for the moment, and I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com, but I'll, I'll put some different examples in here and some comments before I upload it so that you'll, you'll have it available there on my website if you want it. Okay, so backslash capital S matches non-space characters. So let's say we want to we want to match a Y followed by as many non-space characters as possible. So we'll match the rest of this word let's say, but we won't match that because it's a space. We could do that by saying y here backslash capital S and then I could use a star to say match as many as possible but match zero if that's all you can match compatible with the rest of the expression. Or I could use a plus to say match at least one of those. Let's try star and see how that goes. So now, because I'm forcing it to match the y, it's going to look, it's going to go forward along the string, find the y, and then it'll say, yeah, and now from here I'm going to match zero or more non space characters, but as many as possible, because as we saw last time in the last tutorial, star is greedy and it tries to match as much as it can compatible with the rest of the expression and bearing in mind that the expression is going to start on the left hand side and walk forward and match at the first place that it can along the string. So if I run that I get now years and it's, it's matching the whole rest of this string. And now finally let's look at this alphanumeric example. Let's say that the, the text, well uh, this is probably a good example in itself Actually, no, it isn't because it's got spaces in it. Okay, uh, let's create a string that doesn't have spaces in it, just alphanumeric characters. So if I, if I delete the spaces here, I am 117 years old tomorrow. This now consists purely of alphanumeric characters, and we could even have an underscore in there if we want. And to match all of these, we could use backslash W. So I say backslash W. And let's m make it match. Um, well, if I if I use a star, it's going to be as much as possible, but it could match zero. And the thing is, because it starts at the left here, it's going to start here and say, "Oh yes, this position matches," and I'll match as much as I can from this position onwards, and that will be all of it, uh, apart from the dot. Actually, I don't think it's going to match that. So let's run this, and now we see that it matches the whole thing right up to the dot, which it doesn't match because dot is not an alphanumeric character, but it will match the underscore because that counts as alphanumeric. And that's very handle, handy for email addresses and things like that. So that's it for this tutorial. And uh, we may have um, a bit of a look at one or two other things, but pretty soon I'm going to create a video that's going to test you on regular expressions because I know that how this sort of tends to overload your brain when you first see it and the only way to deal with that overload is to try it for yourself and to initially get to a point where you can at least use them and regular expressions they tend to do things that you don't expect they tend to catch you out and one way to deal with that is to build them up bit by bit create a very very minimal regular expression with just a few characters in it and then gradually add to it. Don't try to build up a huge expression all at once because in general it won't work. But just try typing this stuff yourself. Try matching stuff. Try to get a feel for how it works. And in uh, one or two videos down the line, I'm going to give you a little test on all this stuff. So that's it for this time. This code will be on caveofprogramming.com with some comments and examples. And until next time, happy coding.